please welcome Tom Jones. Few names in entertainment history stand out as much as Tom Jones. Jones was the definition of a natural showman. With a voice that could move mountains and a swagger that could win over even the coldest hearts. From the dimly lit pubs of Wales to the gleaming stages of Las Vegas, his journey was a symphony of successes and tribulations. Despite the admiration of millions, fate dealt a brutal hand. Let's take a look at his illustrious career. Early Life Tom Jones, real name Thomas John Woodward, was born on June 7, 1940 at Kingsland Terrace in Treforest, Wales. Born to Frida Jones and Thomas Woodward, a coal miner, his origins were deeply ingrained in Welsh soil. While his origin was predominantly English, he had strong family links to Wales. His maternal grandpa was from Wales, while his maternal grandmother, while born in Wales, was of English heritage with roots in Somerset and Wiltshire. Similarly, his English paternal grandparents were from Gloucestershire and Wiltshire. Growing up in Tree Forest, Tom attended Wood Road Infant School, Wood Road Junior School, and Pontypridd Central Secondary Modern School. However, his academic aspirations were eclipsed by his growing interest in music. Tom had a tremendous vocal gift from a young age, and he frequently serenaded family gatherings, weddings, and the school choir. Despite his resistance to regular academics and athletics, his talent for singing gave him a sense of purpose and confidence. And the lady is mine. Tom was tragically diagnosed with tuberculosis at the age of 12, which changed his life forever. He was bedridden for two long years, dealing with the crippling symptoms of the sickness. Tom reflected on this challenging experience later in life, saying, I spent two years in bed recovering. It was the darkest period of my life. Confined to his bed, music became his shelter and refuge, providing a lifeline in the middle of darkness. Immersed in the songs that filled his chamber, Tom found consolation in the rhythm and lyrics that transcended the limitations of his condition. As Tom managed the limits of his sickness, music became more than just a leisure. It became a lifeline. With little else to do, he immersed himself in the world of music, taking inspiration from the myriad sounds that filled the radio. Tom's musical tastes grew with every passing day, from the lyrical crooning of jazz legends to the thrilling beats of rock and roll. Drawing on his artistic abilities, he found peace in expressing his feelings on paper in vibrant strokes and colors. Despite the physical constraints caused by his disease, Tom's spirit was unwavering. Fueled by steadfast resolve, he focused his efforts on polishing his trade, improving his voice power with each passing day. As music filled the air, Tom discovered his voice. And there to meet me is my mama. Powerful, resonant, and full of emotion. During these formative years, he turned adversity into opportunity, rising from the shadows with a renewed sense of purpose and tenacity, sowing the seeds of his future success. Rise to Fame Tom Jones possesses a vocal instrument described as a full-throated, robust baritone, a resonant quality that has captivated audiences worldwide. However, Jones himself reveals that in his youth, his voice leaned towards the tenor range. He notes, what you lose on the top end, you gain on the bottom end. I used to be able to hit a top C when I was young. Now it's a B flat. Despite this shift, his vocal prowess remained undeniable, heralding the beginning of a remarkable musical journey. In 1963, Jones assumed the role of frontman for Tommy Scott and the Senators, a Welsh beat group that quickly garnered a loyal following and earned a reputation in South Wales. Their collaboration with producer Joe Meek led to the recording of several solo tracks, yet success proved elusive. Nevertheless, their perseverance led them to the attention of DECA producer Peter Sullivan, who directed them to manager Phil Solomon, marking a pivotal moment in Jones's career trajectory. Under the guidance of Gordon Mills, Jones's manager, the young vocalist was introduced to the bustling music scene of London. Mills, recognizing the potential for success, rebranded him as Tom Jones, capitalizing on the popularity of the Academy Award-winning 1963 films of the same name. With a new moniker and a fresh perspective, Jones embarked on a journey that would redefine the landscape of popular music. Securing a recording contract with Decca, Jones released his debut single, Chills and Fever, in late 1964. Although it failed to make an impact on the charts, his follow-up release, 
it's not unusual, catapulted him to international stardom. Championed by offshore pirate radio station Radio Caroline, the song became a sensation, propelling Jones to the forefront of the British invasion. The year 1965 proved to be a watershed moment in Jones's career, solidifying his status as one of the era's preeminent vocalists. It's Not Unusual soared to the top of the charts in the United Kingdom and made significant strides in the United States. Mills, recognizing Jones's versatility, secured prominent film themes for him, including the iconic James Bond film Thunderball and What's New Pussycat, written by Burt Bacharach and Hal David. Reflecting on his initial reaction to What's New Pussycat, Jones recalls feeling ambivalent about the song's unconventional nature. However, Bacharach's persuasive argument and vision convinced him to lend his powerful vocals to the track, resulting in a timeless classic. The accolades poured in, culminating in Jones being honored with the Grammy Award for Best New Artist in 1966, during a fortuitous encounter at Paramount Studios in Hollywood. <laughs> I got my first Grammy in 1965 which is 50 years ago, exactly. Jones crossed paths with the legendary Elvis Presley. Recalling the momentous meeting, Jones fondly remembers Presley serenading him with, with these hands, as he approached him on set. Thus began a profound friendship between the two icons, united by their mutual respect and admiration for each other's craft. As the musical landscape evolved, Jones's popularity experienced fluctuations, prompting Mills to reinvent his image as a crooner. Embracing a diverse range of material, Jones continued to captivate audiences on both sides of the Atlantic with hits like I'll Never Fall in Love Again, I'm Coming Home, and Delilah, each ascending to the upper echelons of the UK charts. Throughout his illustrious career, Tom Jones has remained a consummate entertainer, enchanting audiences with his powerful voice, charismatic stage presence, and enduring passion for music. His journey from humble beginnings in Wales to global stardom serves as a testament to the transformative power of talent, perseverance, and artistic vision. Making a Comeback In the 1970s, Tom Jones embarked on tours with notable female singing groups Quiet Elegance and The Blossoms, who served as his backing vocalists during his performances. Despite a slight dip in popularity during this period, Jones continued to churn out hit singles, including classics like She's a Lady, Till, and The Young New Mexican Puppeteer. However, it was his 1976 chart topper, Say You'll Stay Until Tomorrow, that reignited his success, climbing to number one on the US country chart, number 15 on the Billboard Hot 100, and number 40 on the UK singles chart. Jones made his television debut in 1972, co-starring with Jennifer O'Neill in David Winter's spectacular The Special London Bridge Special. Jones explained his decision to join by citing the ability to continue his television work without being tied down to a series, which he valued for its creative flexibility. The following year, Jones was set to make his feature debut in Yakawald, playing a CIA assassin. However, the production ran into financial difficulties and was eventually canceled barely three weeks into filming, a setback in Jones's fledgling acting career. Did they teach you London ways and make a great lady of you? Most of the time I was in France. My aunt took me there. Hola. In 1989, Tom Jones received one of the highest honors in entertainment with a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame located at Hollywood Boulevard in front of Fredericks of Hollywood. Collaborating with music icon Van Morrison, Jones contributed to Morrison's album Carrying a Torch, released in 1991 on Dover Records. Notably, Jones delivered a soulful rendition of Morrison's title track, showcasing his versatility as an artist. Jones's influence extended beyond music, as evidenced by his appearances at prominent events like the UK's Glastonbury Festival in 1992. The following year, he made guest appearances as himself on popular US sitcoms, The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air and The Simpsons, adding to his multifaceted appeal as a performer. Hello, Marge. That's it. Big smile. Everybody's happy. In 1993, Jones signed with Interscope Records and released the album The Lead and How to Swing It, the album's lead single, If I Only Knew, soared to number 11 on the UK charts, cementing Jones's enduring relevance in the music industry. He showcased his versatility once again at the 1994 MTV Europe Music Awards, where he not only performed If I Only Knew, but also served as the host of the prestigious event. 
Jones's foray into film soundtracks saw him cover Randy Newman's You Can Leave Your Hat On for the soundtrack of the acclaimed film The Full Monty in 1997, showcasing his ability to breathe new life into classic tunes with his distinctive voice. Marriage and Family Life Jones's marriage to his high school sweetheart, Melinda Rose Linda Trenchard, spanned nearly six decades, enduring until her passing from cancer on April 10, 2016. Their journey together began at a tender age, as they exchanged vows on March 2, 1957, when both were just 16 years old. The union was swiftly followed by the arrival of their son, Mark, shortly after their wedding ceremony. In the early years of their marriage, Jones found himself shouldering the responsibilities of parenthood while navigating the challenges of providing for his young family. To make ends meet, he toiled in construction and later at a glove factory, striving to secure a stable future for his loved ones. Despite the demands of his burgeoning career as a singer, Jones remained steadfast in his commitment to his family, persevering through the trials and tribulations of their shared journey. Throughout their marriage, Jones and Trenchard weathered the storm of public scrutiny, with Jones's well-documented extramarital affairs casting a shadow over their relationship. Despite these challenges, their bond stood the test of time, anchored by a deep-seated love and mutual respect that transcended the trials they faced. Following the heartbreaking loss of his beloved wife, Jones made the poignant decision to part ways with their cherished Los Angeles mansion, along with its contents, save for cherished photographs. In a poignant tribute to Trenchard's memory, Jones honored her final wish by relocating to an apartment in London, where they had shared countless memories together. This poignant gesture symbolized Jones's unwavering devotion to his late wife as he sought solace in the familiar surroundings that held echoes of their life together. In the wake of Trenchard's passing, Jones embarked on a journey of healing and remembrance, finding solace in the enduring memories of their life together. Despite the profound loss he experienced, Jones's unwavering love for his wife remained a guiding light, shaping his decisions and honoring her legacy in every step he took scandals, and affairs. Tom Jones's personal life has been marked by a series of revelations and controversies, shedding light on the complexities of fame and its impact on relationships. At the height of his fame, Jones candidly admitted to engaging in numerous dalliances with groupies, claiming to have had affairs with up to 250 of them annually. His larger-than-life persona and charismatic stage presence undoubtedly fueled his allure among fans, leading to encounters with several notable women. Among his romantic liaisons were dalliances with prominent American figures, including singer Mary Wilson, presenter Charlotte Laws, and former Miss World, Marjorie Wallace. Perhaps one of the most surprising revelations came from actress Cassandra Peterson, widely known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, who disclosed in 2008 that she lost her virginity to Jones. However, one of Jones's most significant extramarital affairs had lasting repercussions. During a tour in the United States in October 1987, he embarked on a brief relationship with model Catherine Berkery, unaware that it would lead to a life-altering revelation. Berkery later discovered she was pregnant, prompting a protracted legal battle that culminated in a U.S. court ruling in 1989, affirming Jones as the biological father of their son. Despite initially contesting the court's decision, Jones eventually acknowledged paternity in 2008, although without expressing any desire to establish a relationship with his son, singer Jonathan Berkery. In addition to his romantic entanglements, Jones's career was punctuated by financial considerations and political decisions. Following the election of a labor government in the United Kingdom in 1974, Jones opted to become a tax exile seeking to mitigate the impact of the exorbitant 98% income tax imposed by the new administration. This decision led him to relocate to a more tax-friendly jurisdiction, underscoring the far-reaching implications of fiscal policy on the lives of high-profile individuals. In 1976, Jones made a significant investment by purchasing a sprawling mansion located at Copa de Oro Road in the East Gate Bel Air area of Los Angeles. The property, formerly owned by renowned entertainer Dean Martin, served as a luxurious retreat for Jones and his family. However, after more than two decades of ownership, Jones opted to divest himself of the estate, selling it to actor Nicolas Cage in 1998 for a reported sum of $6.4 million. This transaction underscored Jones's astute financial acumen, 
and his ability to leverage his assets for substantial gains in the competitive real estate market. Rumors With Elvis Presley, Jones's interaction with his idol, Elvis Presley, was a pivotal point in his life. Jones finally met Presley in person in 1965 while filming Paradise Hawaiian Style on the Paramount stage. Their meeting sparked a deep and enduring friendship that lasted until Presley's untimely death in 1977. Their friendship grew beyond admiration. They became confidants, frequently spending late evenings together in Las Vegas, delighting in music and revelry within Presley's private apartment. This companionship forged an enduring bond between the two titans. Following the demise of Jones's wife, rumors grew about his relationship with Priscilla Presley, Elvis's ex-wife. Rumors of a love relationship between Jones and Priscilla sparked public interest and speculation. However, in 2021, Jones revealed the basis of their relationship, admitting that it began in the 1960s and was based on true friendship. Despite the accusations, Jones and Priscilla had a platonic relationship marked by mutual respect and friendship. Their adventures together, whether dining or attending parties at Jeff Franklin's house, were simply the result of two friends who enjoyed each other's company. Despite outward suspicion, their relationship remained based on friendship and mutual affection. Career Demise as Tom Jones navigated through the 2010, his music career encountered a shifting landscape marked by both challenges and moments of resurgence. The release of his album, Praise and Blame in 2010, signified a departure from his traditional style, embracing gospel and blues influences with covers of renowned artists like Bob Dylan and John Lee Hooker. However, the album's unconventional direction faced scrutiny from within the industry. Island Records, Jones's new label, received an email from David Sharp, its vice president, expressing reservations about the project's spiritual theme and questioning its viability. Despite internal doubts, Jones pressed on, showcasing his new sound on platforms like Friday Night with Jonathan Ross and Late Show with David Letterman. The album's debut at number two on the UK charts provided a glimmer of hope amidst the uncertainty surrounding his artistic evolution. Throughout 2010 and beyond, Jones continued to engage with audiences, performing at notable events like the Help for Heroes charity concert and making appearances on prominent television shows such as American Idol and The Late Show with David Letterman. In the midst of this musical reinvention, Jones found a new avenue for expression as a coach on the BBC talent show, The Voice UK. His role on the show, which began in 2012, injected fresh energy into his career and introduced him to a younger audience. Despite his success on The Voice, Jones faced disappointment in 2015 when BBC executives abruptly decided not to renew his contract, leaving him feeling sidelined and undervalued. Undeterred by setbacks, Jones continued to explore new musical territory with the release of Spirit in the Room in 2012. This album showcased his versatility with covers of songs by iconic artists like Paul McCartney and Leonard Cohen, further demonstrating his willingness to experiment with different genres and styles. Simultaneously, Jones maintained a presence in the entertainment sphere through television appearances and live performances, including a memorable set at the Queen's Diamond Jubilee concert and headline performances at major festivals like V Festival and BBC Radio 2's Live in Hyde Park. Throughout the remainder of the decade, Jones remained active in the music scene, collaborating with artists like Morrissey and participating in high-profile events such as the Australian Football League's pre-game entertainment for the 2014 Grand Final. His album Long Lost Suitcase released in 2015, capped off a trilogy of albums that showcased his enduring passion for storytelling through song, featuring covers of classics by artists like Hank Williams and the Rolling Stones. As Jones entered the 2020, he continued to defy expectations and push the boundaries of his artistry. His album, Surrounded by Time, released in 2021, marked another chapter in his storied career, featuring covers that resonated with personal significance. Tracks like I Won't Crumble With You If You Fall reflected on his experiences, including the loss of his wife to cancer, underscoring the emotional depth that defines his music. As he continues to write new chapters in his musical journey, Tom Jones proves that age is no barrier to artistic vitality and creative exploration. Legacy Tom Jones's musical legacy is deeply rooted in the rich tapestry of American soul music, drawing inspiration from a diverse array of genres and iconic artists. 
Influenced by the soulful sounds of blues, R and B, and rock and roll, Jones honed his distinctive singing style by studying the performances of legends such as Little Richard, Solomon Burke, and Jackie Wilson. Additionally, he found kinship with fellow rock pioneers like Elvis Presley and Jerry Lee Lewis, whose electrifying stage presence left an indelible mark on his own artistic journey. Throughout his illustrious career, Jones's impact extended far beyond the confines of the music industry, permeating popular culture in myriad ways. One notable example is the song The Ballad of Tom Jones by Space and Karis Matthews, which humorously depicts a quarreling couple finding solace in Jones's music, underscoring the universal appeal of his songs as a source of comfort and connection. Further solidifying his cultural significance, Theatrical productions have sought to capture the essence of Jones's life and music. Tom, a story of Tom Jones, a musical production by Theater Nanog, delves into the intricacies of his journey, offering audiences a glimpse into the man behind the music. Similarly, What's New Pussycat takes inspiration from Henry Fielding's novel The History of Tom Jones, A Foundling, infusing it with the vibrant energy of the 1960s and the timeless allure of Jones's songs. These productions serve as tributes to his enduring influence on both the music industry and popular culture at large. Much like his idol Presley, Jones has amassed a legion of devoted fans and imitators worldwide, a testament to the enduring appeal of his music and persona. From tribute acts to impersonators, his influence reverberates across generations, captivating audiences with his magnetic stage presence and soul-stirring performances. Jones's cultural impact extends even into the realm of film and video games, where his music and persona have been immortalized in various forms of media. In the animated film Flushed Away, his hit song She's a Lady accompanies a memorable scene, showcasing the timeless allure of his music to new audiences. Similarly, in the video game Team Fortress 2, the character scout's obsession with Tom Jones' merchandise pays homage to his enduring popularity. While his catchphrase, What's New Pussycat, adds a playful touch to the game's narrative. As Jones's career continues to evolve, his legacy remains as vibrant and influential as ever, inspiring countless artists and entertainers across the globe. Whether through his soul-stirring performances, chart-topping hits, or iconic catchphrases, he has left an indelible mark on the fabric of popular culture, ensuring that his music will continue to resonate for generations to come. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more.